Nicholas Bravo, Arcada. Um, first of all, <laughs> this is a joke. Okay, first of all, you have the Supreme Court that already ruled on this. You have the California State Court that all, all, already ruled on this. You have a Stanford educated lawyer who already told you what the law is. And yet, we have these individuals on the corporation or the Committee on Democracy and Corporations, which is just an arm, a branch of the uh, Democracy Unlimited, which is run by some carpetbagger by the name of David Cobb. It's Measure T all over again. So what you're basically wanting to do is you're, you're walking up to the federal government and saying, here, sue us because we're idiots. Now, as far as some of the amendments on this, like uh, making it so that teenagers cannot donate to a campaign, first of all, I don't know that many teenagers that are interested in politics. But what, does, what this does do is it ensures that the elites are kept in power. Millionaires, such as <coughs> Councilwoman Stillman and uh, Councilman Winkler, have a distinct advantage. They don't need that many contributions. All they got to do is open up their wallet and throw a few hundred thousand at it. Whereas up and coming politicians who are new to the game, like Shane, no offense, um, they rely on contributions. If you're, a poly if you're a person just getting into politics and you want to create some change, the only way you're going to create that is if you have people willing to give you money. And the only way most people are willing to speak, and yes, David Meserve, I will correct you, money is a form of speech. If I choose to give my money to someone who has integrity and character, because I want them in office like Shane, I will do so. That is a form of free speech. If I want to uh, boycott the Arcada I so that Kevin Hoover goes out of business, which he's headed that way already, I will do that. Money is a form of free speech. And I am appalled that the Committee on Democracy and Corporations, I mean, I got to wonder how many Harvard, Yale, Stanford educated lawyers or businessmen or financiers are on that committee. Any of them? No, of course not. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nick Brado, and I'm running for Eureka City Council, first work district. Vote for me in this next election, and you can be assured that I will lower your taxes, bring business to Eureka, and make life a whole lot better for a whole lot of people. Back when I was living in Phoenix, I had uh, the car, the job, the house, everything. Uh, then the economy went south, lost it all. Was surrounded by people who were bitter, cruel, angry. I thought, hey, I'll go back to Humboldt. Not much has changed. I'm doing everything I can to survive. Cycling, panhandling, I have filled out a hundred resumes, not able to get a job. I am told it's illegal for me to sleep, to eat, to stand, to sit, to do, to exist. I have done everything humanly possible to make everybody happy. And I still am surrounded by bitter, angry, cold-hearted people. I'm not going to name names, but what I am going to say is the attitude of this city against its poor and downtrodden sucks. 
I get it if you don't want to help me. Hey, that's fine. But if I'm going to recycle and make money, leave me alone to do it. If I need to take a nap on a park bench so I can function, leave me alone and let me do it. Hello, Bravo, Eureka. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, an issue uh, in regards to, well, we've seen the uh, activists out in front of the courthouse every Tuesday, the, uh, those who are standing up for the poor, you know, against the war on the poor. Now, one of the things that I would suggest that the uh, city council do in, is basically remove regulations that hinder the poor from helping themselves. Uh, I myself am somebody who, uh, you know, lives below poverty level, which most people in Eureka in Humboldt County do. But considering the economy, I think it is uh, a necessary step for the government to basically uh, tell people uh, ways that they can become more proficient in providing for themselves, providing for their own lives, becoming responsible for themselves on an individual basis because uh, a hand up is far better than a hand out. You know the old saying, teach him, you know, give a man a fish, he'll he eats for a day. Teach him to fish, he eats for a lifetime. Uh, my big issue is I see in politics more and more at a national level and even at a local level, politicians promising you know, everything under the sun uh, for votes or for, you know, certain people to like them. And I find that really disingenuous. I would rather, I, I got into an argument actually with one of the um, uh, ladies out there in the, you know, get the war on the poor thing. Um, her issue was that she was frustrated because she felt as if the government was not just in her way, but that it owed her something. Uh, now, as an individual, as a more of a libertarian individual, I believe that as long as the government gets out of my way and lets me do what I need to do to succeed, that I'm going to succeed in life. And I'm certain that there are people who, you know, due to uh, mental illness or intellectual disabilities, uh, they may not be able to succeed as well as another person. But the, nevertheless, the important thing to do is to continue to encourage these people to try to have a better life and do things for themselves because at no matter what socioeconomic status you have, here in America, we still have the ability to come from nothing and actually become somebody of meaning. And I think the issue of self-esteem also plays into it, and uh, I will be doing shows on self-esteem and unemployment and homelessness on Public Access Channel here in Humboldt County, so I hope uh, the viewers stay tuned on Public Access for a... Uh, Thank you, Nick. Thank All right. Thanks, Nick. Sorry, and I, I will stay the three minutes... When the timer goes off, I do turn off the mic microphone, but thank you very much, Nick. Nicholas Bravo, Arcada. I'd like to read a uh, couple of paragraphs from a letter from a Birmingham jail written by Martin Luther King, April 19, 1963. Quote, but more basically, I am in Birmingham because injustice is here just as the prophets in the 8th century B.C. left their villages and carried their thus saith the Lord far beyond the boundaries of their hometowns, and just as the Apostle Paul left his village of Tarsus and carried the gospel of Jesus Christ to the far corners of the world, so am I compelled to carry the gospel of freedom beyond my hometown. Like Paul, I, am constantly, I must constantly respond to the Macedonian call for aid. The, unquote. The reason I am here in Arcata is because of injustice, and I will stand against that injustice. The only weapons I need against this injustice are love, light, and truth. I have these in abundance. I do not say that with arrogance, but with an incredible humility, because I know 
that a just God has bestowed these gifts upon me and with love, light, and truth as my guides, there is no power in the universe that can stop me. Indeed, the only power that great men like Martin Luther King Jr., Christ, Socrates, Buddha, Washington, and countless others ever had were the same love, light, and truth that has been bestowed upon me. I will also say that if you have a thirst for true freedom and true justice, as I do, you will also desire to learn love, light, and truth. In closing, I am going to be uh, shortly working with Access Public Television in Eureka to begin a spiritual show in which I will not only discuss politics but also spirituality and how it relates to the necessity of man's character to rise above the muck to get rid of the worm's eye view and become the God that each and every one of us is. Love, light, and truth. With those, no power in the universe can stop any individual in their quest for freedom. Thank you. Nicholas Bravo, Eureka. Um, I do have a couple of questions. Number one, as far as why only three, uh, because as, you, as David Tyson has said, you know they have to go up for a review, etc. So what if no? What if none of them are able to, or just one of them are able to uh, fill out the forms correctly and have everything serviceable? You should at least have another three as backup in case these these current three don't make it. Um, as far as the safety issue, I understand where you're coming from on that. There is a very dark side to any drug, whether it's legal or illegal. Um, but I think part of what will kill the black, mar the black market marijuana trade, which is centered in Arcata, uh, is to bring it out into the open and eventually start the slow process towards legalization, which... California is going to have legal, legalized marijuana, maybe not this decade, maybe not in 20 years, but it's going to be coming pretty soon. And I think if we pull it out into the light and we show the issue for what it is, stop being scared of it, actually make some money, because all the taxes that those marijuana patients are going to be paying, <laughs> they could pay for that pool that we want to put. I mean, it's just it just makes logical economic sense. Um, I would also like to mention that part of the necessity of, of basically creating an atmosphere where it's legal is that we destroy the black market marijuana trade. Because you can still have, you can have 10 clinics, but if somebody's, uh, you know, making a lot of money by having an illegal grow, you're not really doing anything different. What needs to happen is it needs to be brought out into the light. The illegal black market trade needs to be crushed. I know in Arcata there's a couple of grow places that you know have medical marijuana patients and all you basically have to do is walk in there and go, <coughs> I need a card and they'll give you one. And a lot of those places buy off cops, they buy off public officials. Um, it's a really really dark underworld they got going on in Arcata. And I don't want us here in Eureka to be ashamed and afraid of something that we can control if we just bring it out into the light and have intelligent, grown-up conversations about it. And I want to thank uh, Melinda and Linda for being so uh, open about their concerns with it, because that really helps move the process forward. Thank you. Nick Bravo, Eureka. Um, I just want to say, David, you are a great city manager. From what I've seen in other cities and compared to some of the bigger cities, you have got it together. You know what you're doing. I mean, you keep it all them in line, I mean, that's a tough job. So I got to say, I am glad you're going to be city manager for a few more years. 
Keep up the good work.